If a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it bears much fruit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. We are reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. At that time, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said that it had Fathered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show by what death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, one word, if we were to summarize our today's readings, maybe one word, with only one word, we would use the word readiness. Uh, because what we get is that uh, in today's readings is that Christ is ready to offer everything for our salvation. And therefore, we can use the same 
to ask this question, whether we too are ready to offer. As I said, today, the door towards Holy Week and Easter is opened. All has been opened. Such that we are now able to almost see with certainty what will happen. We celebrate today the fifth Sunday of Lent. And as we have said, we are drawing very close to our destination and to the most important moment in our journey this season. This fact is accurately reflected in all the readings of this Sunday. This also happens to be the last Sunday of the month of March. Christ is ready to offer everything for our salvation. And we too must not only be willing, but also ready to offer all for him and for others. That is where now the question comes, how ready and willing are we to offer everything, and this time round, not only for him, but also for others. The first reading of this Sunday is an assurance of God's continuous presence with us. It also reminds us of new things that God is about to do in our midst. He says, I will make a new covenant and never call their sin to mind. Then I will be their God and they will be my people. Now, this is a statement of assurance. You know, the worst may be amongst, but the worst that can happen to a human being is when they are rejected. I'm imagining a scenario where your mom and your father wakes up one day and tells you, we don't know you. Don't call me father. Don't call me mom. It, of course, it happens, like almost all the time, for whatever reason, and it is the most devastating experience that a child can have when they feel and they know that they are rejected. And now, especially when it has been, it has been formalized and verbalized. Uh, don't call me your dad. Don't call me your mother. When a relationship is not only denied, but actually ended. And I know so many people have resulted to suicide because of rejection. Now, today, there is an assurance that we are getting that God, God our Father is ready to set aside a relationship that was destroyed right from the beginning. And he wishes to restore the broken relationship and pushes us to do the same. I was seated in the past week. I was seated in, in an inheritance case. Well, not so much a case, but I was to be a witness where a, a dad was um, talking to his children about what he is, he, is, he is giving them and what he would want them to, to have in the event he is not there. And I remember in, to one of the sons who had had his own turbulence um, told him that, uh, called him by name and told him that, uh, and asked him a question, is there anything that you cannot forgive? So the boy said no. The young man said no. Is there anyone you cannot forgive? Of course, there is where he was headed. 
and uh, he wanted on also to make sure that uh, should anybody, and in fact, uh, he, he, he asked him, should anybody come to you for forgiveness and apologize? Would you forgive them? And the young man said, yes, dad, I will. This is a man who wanted to make sure that relationships are restored because he knew that uh, he may not be there for so very long because he's also aiding. Now, what this dad was doing, making sure that everything is uh, patched up, is what God is telling us. And this is actually not just a biblical statement, it, uh, it, um, it's a challenge. That we must be a people, and not, this is not just uh, the Lenten vibe, it is an everyday vibe that ours is to be people who brings together that which is broken, communicating the spirit of God in our relationships. Maybe for those men who may have told their sons and daughters, do not call me um, your dad, maybe this is the time to be challenged and ask, where do I stand? If I tell my son not to be called not to call me my son or my daughter who will they call dad or mom in the past and in this forum we have said that uh, there can be exes and there has been exes and there will be exes there can be an ex-wife an ex-husband an ex-boyfriend and an ex and an an ex-girlfriend and they are still there. And they will be there next year. <laughs> but there will never be an ex-son. And there will never be an ex-daughter. Never ever. So, on this first Sunday, we may need to go back to our relationships and especially to our families where relationships have been broken. And then we ask, do we need to destroy the relationships or do we want to restore as God is also bringing restoration so that we can get back there and know that we have one duty to gather with Christ. Families will always have issues. There will always be drama in our families. There will always be that one person in every family who is always looking south when everybody else is north. Not that they are not ours. They may have completely different orientation of life, but they remain our sons and daughters. And there is nothing that can justify our denouncing, our denying them that this is not my son or my brother or my sister. I will say, because it's also good to admit that uh, this is my brother, but the guy is quite a heavy cross. Have you said the person is bad? Umezema tu huyu ni mradhagu, lakini ni msaraba. Ni wale wakora, wakora abao, wameishi hii dunia. Kutuhagaisha kama familia. And they are there. Wanahagaisha. People are not, are not sleeping. <laughs> there is a mom who told me the other day, Father, wherever I go, I carry my key. I close everywhere. Because I have a son who will sell even plates. <laughs> so you can imagine having a brother like that. And maybe you have traveled home. Maybe the young ones here, you have come from school. Your brother is, by bad luck, the guy is home. You know, there are some people when they are home, is bad luck. Because when they are home, everything will get lost, including themselves. <laughs> Unafika, jamaa nangoka na simu na anaeda nayo. So simu inapotea, ata ya inapotea miezi miwili. So inafika pahali, unaza kusema, eh, si washa tu arudi, ni tanunua simu. So the guy comes, and then he comes and says, oh, my sis, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'll never do that again. I read a quote. I don't know whether it is true. I'm only asking, I'm asking the ladies in the house. Because if I ask men, I'm not sure whether I'm going to get the answer I want. <laughs> because the quote was about men. So, so somebody asked, who are a man? So then he continued to answer. A man 
is somebody <laughs> who will kneel down and, uh, and apologize and cry with their hands up while still lying. <laughs> uh, gracious ladies, is that true? Yes. God is seeing you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we have got those fellows at home. The guy comes home, he's apologizing, telling everybody the way he has seen Jesus. <laughs> and that they are completely transformed. Only to get a chance at the mess, everything. Those are the persons we too have to consider our relationships with them. There's nobody who chose to be to belong to a certain family. We all found ourselves there. We never chose our brothers and sisters. They just took reserved. They just came. And then we found ourselves. We are these brothers and these sisters. If any one of us turned south, we continue to love them with the love of Christ. And today, the challenge is, let us go back there and restore that which has been broken. And it can be possible. The second reading of this Sunday reminds us of the Gethsemane uh, experience of Jesus. It reminds of the great sacrifice of Christ. First, this was in order to fulfill the promise of the Father. And second, it was in order to save us. The Bible tells us, He learned to obey through suffering, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal life. He is the source of eternal life to all of us who obey him. And that we are, to, we are told that this he did in humility and in obedience. Now, two virtues that we need even in restoration. In restoration, we need the two. Now, from whichever side, from the aggressor and the one who is hurt. Because in some instances, it needs a lot of humility, a lot of it, to sit and listen to some people tell you that they'll never do something and they have been doing it eternally. And this time around, you are supposed to sit down and listen to them telling you exactly what they have broken a million times. And number two, one of the most difficult things in the world, maybe as a Christian, maybe everywhere, is obedience. Because sometimes, you know, a human person is created with some funny inclination towards selfishness. And therefore, it's like we would, sometimes we want things our own design, our own way. And here we are reminded that no, it is not just about us. There are others who are in this mix, as it were. Today, as we read in the Gospel of John, Jesus is reminding us something. Remember, the, uh, the, the, the chapter that we have read Jesus already has, has resurrected Lazarus. So the atmosphere is not very good for him because things are not, are not looking, looking very, very rosy for him. But I, there is also a certain spirit of inspiration that the restoration is not only proclaimed but is already real. And that this has been done for people to believe. For people to believe. Now, this is an event that marks a turning point, a paradigm shift, if you like, for the conflict that there was with the Jewish authorities. John's Gospel tells us that the Sanhedrin met after this event and made to kill Jesus. In the 12th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus is anointed at Bethany and entered Jerusalem in triumph. Now, remember this is what is happening coming Sunday. Coming Sunday, the 28th, we'll be celebrating Palm Sunday. Now, we again see evidence 
of the significance of raising of Lazarus to this event. John reports that the crowd also gathered to see Lazarus. Did you know there are some people who are not happy when others are exerting? There are people when they see things are going on very well, they get so much angered by that. And I am sure, listening to me this great day, are people maybe who have gone through difficult moments, not because they did anything bad, but only because they did something and it did excel. And now they became targets. Some have lost jobs because they did very well. And their juniors or seniors were not happy with that, with that success. Now, this happens all the time. Um, in, our, in our last week's uh, reflection on, um, on um, the way of the cross, we were reminded of the mark of the cross. That although there will be those moments of tribulations, there will always be victory. And Jesus tells us that it is good not to focus on that which brings us down, but we focus on that which, which raises us up. No wonder he says, and when I am raised up, I will draw all men to myself. I will draw everybody to myself. This is in contradistinction with what happens to us when we are raised up. Many a times, um, when we get so much blessed, many are the times that we become a little bit more distanced from others, a little bit more um, arrogant, a little bit more, uh, more indifferent towards our brothers and sisters. Now, following... Remember now, after we have come from that kind of a situation, following now the triumph, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Jesus predicted, as it would be, his suffering, death, and resurrection. And the good thing is that uh, the communication and the way it is done, it is so dramatic, and the, the language used is also... Uh, full of uh, activities, as it were. Unlike the way it is communicated in the, in the synoptics, John he is more precise. And he talks of the grain. And he says, unless the grain falls and dies, it will remain alone. But if it falls and dies, it multiplies. Now, I want to talk about this in some two minutes. In each one of us, there is a very active seed of life and victory in every one of us. How active the seed remains depends on the attitude we carry in life. But each one of us, irrespective of our background, is destined for victory. There is no one person that God created whose destination was misery, pain, and hopelessness. None. But do we end up there? Yes, we do. How do we end up there? Sometimes we sabotage our very own breakthroughs, or others do that. It could be self-making, or maybe forces from outside, others making, or maybe just some natural catastrophe. But that does not mean that any one of us was created to ever get lost. So the question is, when we are in Jesus, is it possible again to be in Jesus and at the same time live in defeat? No, it is not possible. And the, 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 the message we are getting here is that in Christ, there is victory. In Christ, there is hope for eternity. In Christ, there is mercy and forgiveness of our transgressions. There is no better way of explaining our relationship with God. No wonder this relationship is being restored right from the beginning. Our own unfaithfulness broke it. 
if you want or if you may, read uh, the book of Genesis chapter 6 from verse 5 to verse number 8. But that does not mean that uh, God is still counting what we did. In fact, he says, uh, I want to get that. Yeah, he says this. Eh? Um, yeah, I will make a new covenant and never call their sin to mind. Please underline that. I will never call their sin to mind. When forgiveness happens from him, it happens with eternity and finality. It's not about how, how much we have fallen. Jesus is talking about that cosmic framework against which we are to understand his passion, death, and resurrection. That through his death, Satan and the power of darkness is conquered. And through the same, we will also conquer. In fact, the broader message is that we are conquerors in him who died for us. And that is why I have said that it is not possible to remain in Jesus and at the same time live in defeat. <laughs> not possible. Unless maybe we have not been able to understand the type of Jesus we are talking about. But if he is the Redeemer, then we know that those who are in him will always experience, number one, a certain measure of some brokenness and sometimes, uh, sometimes pain. The good thing is, and this is what we have said in the past, there is, because there is no pain that is eternal, we are all destined for victory. No wonder Good Friday comes before Easter Sunday. Our pain has a dying time. Our frustrations have a dying time, a dead end. I remember I have given this reflection about the dead end in the past. There is an expiry date for our problems because we were never created for problems. There is an expiry date for our frustrations because we were never created for frustrations. There is an expiry date for our brokenness because none of us was created for brokenness. There is an expiry date for our rejection because none of us was created for rejection. But for us to understand this, we must properly, please underline that word, properly and faithfully be in Jesus. Because in him, there is fullness of redemption, forgiveness and fullness of redemption. He says that they'll, they'll be my people. God says that it will be his people, not the people of the world. The other day we were reminded that there are two types of wisdoms. The wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. Where do we want to belong? I want, and I know that I would, I, we, we would want to remain in the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God tells us that there will be problems. But these problems cannot last long. Because none of us was meant for that. Through Jesus, all that which is ungodly is rendered null and void. Through Jesus, we have got the assurance. In fact, having known that, then we will have the strength to, to pick our palms on Sunday and say, and say, Hosanna, Hosanna, save me now because I know you can. When you be, be saying Hosanna, save me now, we'll be saying that I'm ready for the restoration of that which has been broken. But we must first identify what is it that is broken that I would want restoration. 
Once we have answered, asked that question, then we ask question number two. Am I ready and willing to work with Jesus for my restoration? For those of us who are looking forward to family restorations, are we ready and willing? Because if we are, we are assured that it is, we are only meant for good things. Life can only get better with Jesus. Thank you. We profess our faith. 